Good day. I'm Reverend Dr. Lauren Artris and the founder of Veritas. And we're here today to introduce you to the pilgrimage that we're planning in Chartres at Chartres Cathedral in France in June. And it's a delight to uh, introduce and to be working with Christine Baltner Paintner for the first time, actually, Christine. Uh, so we're delighted to be with you. Uh, Christine is the author of 12 books, uh, all on spirituality and creativity. She's a poet. She's the founder of the Abbey of the Arts. I know many of you know about the Abbey of the Arts. It's a virtual monastery online. It's a wonderful uh, experience in its own right. Uh, she also uh, leads pilgrimages and uh, retreats around the world, and that's why we're having Christine at Chart Cathedral with the Veritas program called Walking a Sacred Path. So welcome, Christine. Thanks so much, Lauren. I'm really happy to be here. Well, it would be a delight to have you in Chart, and I know that you haven't been there before, and one of my most favorite things to do in the world is to introduce people to Chart. Uh, so I have this brief PowerPoint, and just to uh, make sure that our listeners and those considering coming to Chart kind of have their appetite wet for this amazing medieval town as well as the cathedral that sits right in the center of it. So this is the very famous photograph of Chart Cathedral across the wheat fields, uh, and this is actually the, the fallow wheat fields, but you can see the cathedral eight miles away. And this is the actual pilgrim's path, uh, Christine, that people traveled across. Mm -hmm. So it must have been thrilling to see this as a pilgrim, uh, where you're finally approaching a Chart Cathedral. So here's Chart Cathedral itself from another angle. <clears throat> this uh, phase of the cathedral, there were four earlier cathedrals, uh, dates from 1194, and it's the fifth cathedral in, in the location. And so you can see it from many different angles. Here's from the Japanese uh, garden. Here's another vision of it, but this is the Lure River. And it actually winds around the city three times. Here again, another view. And here's the South Rose window, uh, one of the finest collections of uh, 12th and 13th century stained glass windows is in Chartres. And of course, we have uh, in our afternoon program, uh, we have um, the a tour. Someone will guide us through the cathedral and tell us some of the history. Uh, Shark Cathedral is lucky in the sense that there's been minor war damage. Um, and that's not true, as you, as you know, probably of many European cathedrals. So, mm -hmm. and this is Our Lady of Belvedere, the Our Lady of Beautiful Glass. Um, She's pictured holding Jesus uh, in the position called the throne of wisdom. And this is one of the oldest windows in Chartres. This part of the window actually dates before uh, what's called the Great Fire in 1194, which then issued the building of the cathedral as we know it now. Here's Our Lady of the Pillar. Uh, you'll be surprised to see her now, uh, but it's really uh, an high, high uh, place for devotion. Uh, the people come and uh, say their prayers and then kiss the pillar uh, after to kind of seal their prayers sent, sent off to God through Mary. Here's the very famous veil. In fact, Chartres Cathedral was one of the major uh, pilgrimage cathedrals, not because of the labyrinth, but because of the veil, which was given to the cathedral in 861 by Charles the Bald. And so um, there's an understanding, a legend, I would say, that this veil was uh, worn at the birth of Jesus. Um, that's one, or the other understanding is it may have been worn by Mary during the Annunciation. So pilgrims from around Europe came to see this. Now, this is the second, what I would call a, a dark virgin, uh, she's uh, Our Lady of the Soul Tear, which is under the earth, and she's down in the crypt. And we'll spend considerable time in the crypt uh, during our, our time together. Uh, we'll not only have a tour of the crypt, but we'll also have meditation time down there as well. And it, on Wednesday night in our program, 
we have a wonderful uh, whole evening and the cathedral is ours, so to speak, and we'll be doing meditation and the ritual uh, before we uh, go up to the nave level where we walk the labyrinth. And here, here we are, we're in the, actually the, the uh, organ loft to take this picture. And this is the labyrinth there on the floor, put there around 1201 or so. Um, the, you, when you're up close, and I, I always uh, show people this, the center of the labyrinth has a big scar in it. It's been ripped up. And that was to make uh, cannonballs out of the brass and lead and copper that was there. This is an odd photograph, but I put it in because it stirs people's imaginations. It looks like he's coming from out of the floor. And there is a rumor uh, that there actually was a trap door in the center of the labyrinth, and that is not so. Um, but this is one of the rare photographs where you see the cathedral with no furniture at all. And this is because one of the major pilgrimage uh, groups is coming, and there's thousands from Sri Lanka and they fill the whole cathedral. Here is the labyrinth as people will see it, it uh, participants to our programs will see it uh, during our private evening labyrinth walk. And sometimes people just think, you know, oh, it's just kind of etched into the floor. This is major, major stonework. Uh, comes from the Bose Quarry about five miles away, and there's amazing stories about how they got that stone there because uh, Chart sits on the highest uh, part of the land. But this is one of the few etching um, of people actually using the labyrinth. Uh, these, we've had our archivists uh, date this at 1750, and um, they're in medieval dress and walking the labyrinth. And the labyrinth was a, a layperson's tool. Here's modern day pilgrimage. This is a youth pilgrim, uh, pilgrimage, uh, people leaving uh, from the cathedral to go out and I believe walk up to uh, Notre Dame in Paris. Christine, there's wonderful, wonderful light shows. So this is actually the cathedral um, but uh, the lights are on the cathedral nightly. It's a sight to behold. I have a few more photos. That looks it, amazing. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. it, it really is. There's a couple other photos. Um, this is actually the labyrinth uh, that is out back, uh, the Maison. The, here's another photo of the lights. This is on the north porch. Uh, they began to do research, and, and historically, um, as they cleaned it, they began to see that there were many, many colors that had faded away. So what they did with the lights is capture what was there. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And so this yeah. was actually what it looked like. Um, the, the cathedral was painted at one time, the early days, because it really represented the New Jerusalem, uh, the gorgeous. city of God, the God of jewels and light. So there it is. And here's another angle uh, of it, that lovely. The light shows play every night. They're about 15, 20 minutes long. And they really, uh, the first light show, by the way, they didn't have the labyrinth in it. And now, now they do. So it's, oh. it's advancing as they move. And again, I think this is one of the most beautiful uh, photos of, of Chart Cathedral. Uh, you can see the Tower of the Moon on the left, the Tower of the Sun on the right. Uh, because again, this is a cosmology in itself that uh, when people come, participants come to our programs, they, they have enough time uh, to really learn about the cathedral and learn about the village and sit out at the famous uh, Serpent restaurant and have a glass of wine right at the south entrance and really get a sense of this lovely tempo of the medieval village that surrounds the cathedral. So that literally is glimpses of chart. <laughs> yeah, it looks wonderful. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Christine, tell us uh, about your your program. Yeah, well, it's called um, Poetry in the Sacred Garden of the World, and it's inspired actually by a quote from the Sufi poet Hafiz, where he says, "You know, what gazing upon the garden of the world does your heart desire?" Mm. And so my work is really about integrating two things. One is contemplative practice, and the other is the expressive arts. And expressive arts are kind of unique in that 
uh, the emphasis is really process over product. So my work is always about kind of creative process. How do we open up kind of the creative well within us? How do we get out of our own ways? How do we access our intuition and enter into that kind of lovely dreamlike state where poetry can might maybe emerge from us in new ways? So the week will be, the workshop will be a celebration of sacred poetry in a variety of ways. So we be both reading it and hearing it as well as writing our own. And the way that I lead this is uh, kind of a combination of different writing prompts. Uh, we'll practice some what's called Lexio Divina together with different poems. Lexio Divina is means sacred reading and it's an ancient contemplative practice. And it's a beautiful way to hear a poem several times through, to rest into it, to listen for the words and images that are inspiring us out of it. I find it also helps move us from that more Kind of logical linear planning mind into the more intuitive kind of creative open mind mm -hmm. uh, and from there we do we'll do a lot of free writing which are kind of timed you know five or ten minutes based on different prompts that i give the idea behind timed free writing is you just write you know for the mm -hmm. time given and you you write without editing you write without stopping you write without basically getting in your own way and kind of shortchanging what might be coming through and and often what happens is you get to kind of a deeper layer than you would and then if you were just kind of planning out what you're going to say mm -hmm. and then we'll do some guided poetry writing exercises and i do these mainly either through giving you a particular form to play with and these are all experiments uh -huh. uh, all meant to be um, kind of a playful way of entering into this creative process or we'll work with often we'll work with lines of poems that kind of are the springboard for a particular poetry writing exercise so we're really just you know kind of relish how language both reveals and conceals the holy um, there's this lovely quote from um, John of the Cross I'll, I'll just point out that this is one of the books that I highly recommend I'll be drawing a lot from it's called love poems from God Great. by Dan Daniel Ladinsky and actually mm -hmm. the other book I'll just mention is Meister Eckhart's uh, Book of the Heart. Um, he's also a wonderful mystic. But from the, um, the Love Poems from God, there's just a short quote from John of the Cross and he writes, uh, they can be like the sun words. They can do for the heart what light can for a field. So I love that image of that words can kind of help illuminate our own sort of inner life in different ways. And when I hear that quote, I think about in Ireland where, you know, you have a wet field from all the heavy rain and then the sun comes out and there's like this luminous kind of gold light that just kind of cascades over the field. And I feel like that's what can happen for us when we're entering into this creative process. So for me, writing is really about discovery. So it's not about knowing what we're going to say. It's not about planning it out. It's about entering into the process and, and enjoying it and seeing what, what comes out of it. Uh, and there'll be time for some sharing in partners and small groups with a specific process around that. Sharing is always optional. We'll talk about writing as a spiritual practice. Um, and will just and it, this and I should also just say that this is really open to anybody who whether you consider yourself a writer or not whether you consider yourself a poet or not but if the thought of being in chart and reading poetry and trying your hand at writing some poetry and just sort of feeling that inspiration of an ancient place and being on pilgrimage appeals then mm -hmm. that would be this would be a great experience for you <laughs> that sounds wonderful and I like that you stress its process over product yeah, because uh, I know some people are shy about, uh, you know, writing generally, but also poetry, especially. Yeah, I actually one of my favorite things is is having someone come to a writing retreat that I lead who's a little bit shy and, you know, poetry has a particular block for them. Mm -hmm. And just through the, the little gentle steps that we take, you know, I help them kind of crack open their first poem. And I love that you know, that feeling of like making that process accessible and opening that up for people. So to know that, you know, you'd be, mo we have people in our writing retreats from all different skill levels and, you know, it's, 
you can be a complete beginner or you can be someone who's also po you know written lots of poetry but also just looking for some fresh ways to approach that process mm -hmm. that sounds wonderful yeah and we don't we don't do any critiquing either our our process is all about kind of lifting up what's really working or what we are hearing in the poem it's we're not it's not a um it's not like a workshopping kind of experience uh where we're critiquing things either so I think that's, I think that's really good and um, our schedule, let me say a little bit about that. What you and I have talked about that, but in the morning mm -hmm. is when our seminars will be, what Christine will be uh, teaching, nine to 11-ish uh, or so. And uh, then usually we have a kind of an affinity group after that. Uh, there'll be some, of course, there'll be dyad sharing and sharing in the, in the mornings uh, with Christine. Uh, but then after that, there's, you know, France, they have two hour lunches really we could learn a lot <laughs> from their their wonderful lifestyle there but then after lunch each afternoon we have something that's offered one is a an amazing uh walking into the cathedral as a pilgrim that they like they did in the 12th century uh and it's a by Gilles Frison who was one of the officials of Chartres and uh you literally walk into the crypt uh in the dark and you light candles like they did back then and have a, a tour of the cathedral at night it's really lovely and then there's a tour inside during the day and i mentioned the tour of the crypt and then on wednesday night is when we have our uh, ritual and labyrinth walk and so uh it, it, people have a, a significant amount of time in the cathedral uh, learning about it also time during the program one of the things we found over the years, Christine, because we've been doing this program since 1998, is we wow. really want to give people time to slow down, to take in the village, to take in the cathedral, to have time to journal, time to brood, time to reflect, mm -hmm. walk down by the Loire River. Sounds uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our, our models so much today are kind of push more information in and, and uh, coming to Chart, it really is life changing for many people because they're away from their usual setting and seeing many interesting and beautiful things uh, as well as the countryside. And then just having time to reflect, uh, to think about where they are in their lives. Um, we find a lot of people come to our programs uh, who are in transition. Mm -hmm. I would imagine you find that as well. Yeah, definitely. People on a threshold of something new. And sometimes people come, they don't realize they're on a threshold until they get there. <laughs> and then that's they right. discover it. That's right. Uh, that's so true. And that's when people often uh, come to the labyrinth. Just uh, mm -hmm. And not, again, not consciously necessarily, but, but like, oh, yeah, I'm sort of drawn to that. Yeah. And I, I didn't mention that on one of the afternoons, uh, the afternoon of our ritual on Wednesday, I'll be teaching about the labyrinths and, and we'll be going deeper into the history of the Chart labyrinth and labyrinths in general. Uh, and then that's a way of preparing uh, for our evening as well. I also just want to say that I think the labyrinth and poetry writing go so beautifully together because the labyrinth is a very similar process. You're, you're, it's very process oriented and you're really just showing up to go on this journey of discovery to access your intuition. So it's such a beautiful pairing, I think, the two of them. Yes, it, it really allows you, it takes you into the liminal realms where we meet yes. our muses for sure. Exactly. And so it really be, I think it'll be a very special week. So. So those of you who are listening to this, um, we really want to encourage you to come to Christine's week. My role is I'll be hosting it and, and uh, overseeing the, the whole week. And we have a wonderful team. Dawn Matheny is, uh, oversees the program. And then we have an, our vet person uh, who's an expat who lives in France, uh, who's just really wonderful. So um, I think when people, are making this decision, Christine, I, I always wonder about that process. A lot of times people sort of, well, next year, maybe, well, next year. But um, I really want to encourage if you, if you're considering this program, to, to come ahead. Uh, take the step. Uh, it's often uh, first people, uh, first time people to France. 
um, or even to Europe. Um, we're certainly English speaking. There are other people from other countries that come, but they uh, are able to speak English. So we do stay in uh, the English language for the most part. Um, and people stay in a lovely, we have what really is a, a, a early monastery. Uh, it's about a 60 second walk from the cathedral. And uh, it's remodeled and the rooms are, are very cell-like in the sense that they're not tiny, but they have a private uh, restroom in each one, which is a wonderful benefit, and are just uh, efficient, clean, and, you know, it sort of clears the mind. People often walk in and say, oh, this is really going to work. Because there's not a lot of stuff around uh, to really kind of distract, um, distract us like we have in our own homes. So, so I would encourage people to get to the Veritas website, find out information, and truly consider coming to Shark. And, and the moment is now. I, I think the this is the time. Mm. And also just what a gift it is to be with kindred spirits. Like we live in such difficult times and to have a week where you're with other, you know, seekers and people who value this kind of thing is really just its own gift in itself. That's right. That's right. That's so true. And, and, and lifelong friendships come out of this week mm -hmm. at Shark. Well, thank you, Christine. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for saying yes to our invitation about being our faculty and our presenter in Shark. Thank you, Lauren. I'm very excited about it, really. <laughs> well, well, we'll we'll see each other and meet for the first time in person uh, in, in early June. So, so thank you, Lauren. You too. <laughs> thank you.